welcome CSC 103 students or GRD 121 students. This is a little introduction to some vector graphics using an online application called Gravit. In the past we had used vector without an O and this one's a little more professional. It's a little more like Illustrator. It's actually made by CorelDRAW and we're going to get started and learn about vectors. First thing you can do when you go to gravit.io is you can either go to got it go to designer or try it now either one so click on that link and you can create a free account now you just have to if you use your email you just have to verify it within three days but even if you get started now you could still save images to the cloud no problem as long as you verify your email within three days I'm gonna create a new account just to go through that process and I'll put in an email and my username I'll just use this one because that's the first part of that and then a very simple password that I can remember doesn't have to be super secure and I'll hit start now and I'm not going to remember it and then once you sign in once you create your account you'll have a button here that'll say create you'll have an infinite canvas you could work on and it's working in pixels right now you could set that to inches or use a letter size paper but what you can do to start is hit create it's just creating a new design and that's all we'll do right now and this is our interface and we have pages and layers over here we won't do a whole lot with this right now so you could kind of ignore this side for the time being I mean you could look over there and see what's happening but over here this is contextual meaning when you select objects you'll see this area change over here right now there's not a lot going on and what I'm gonna do first is go here to my kind of object creation here's some basic shapes I could work with I'm gonna start this one just using a rectangle and I'm going to create a rectangle about 400 by 400. If it's not perfect, you could draw it and then look over here. And then you can change it in the width and height to 400. Then just hit tab to resize it. So it's like a 400 by 400 square. I'll just grab it and move it in the middle. And notice I'm using my selection tool. They call this the select tool or the black arrow here. They also have the sub select, which will be for selecting anchor points. Now just keep in mind right now when I select this, and you can see I could change things like colors and all kinds of things over here right now. But it has to be selected. It has to know what you're, what you're targeting to show any information here. Now these things here are not anchor points. These are what you can use to scale like any other kind of program that would have a bounding box. You can even rotate with this thing if you wanted to. And I'll just undo that by using Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on Windows. And you could also use these in the middle to kind of squash and stretch and things like that. But this is the main selection for the entire shape. If we actually want to go in and select the anchor points, what we have to do is use the sub select tool. Now, the sub select tool initially will not do anything to a rectangle. What you have to do is use this tool right here, convert to path. There you can see it convert to path and just click on it. And then it kind of breaks it up and it shows a rectangle separated by four anchor points. Those are like little connecting things, little Tinker Toy connectors between straight line segments. You can grab these, move them around and do anything you want with them. You can even grab them and, and delete them and then it'll make a straight line. If they're straight line segments, it'll make a straight line. Now again, I'll undo that, but these are four anchor points. Notice I can, I can highlight two of them and move them around. I could highlight just one and move it around. And I could even highlight, you know, one here and then hold shift and click on this one and then I can move two around if I wanted to which is a little odd right now but anyway those are the anchor points so notice that when I click on here I see unselected anchor points and what I'm going to do first with this tool with the sub select tool it's really nice that this does this because in Illustrator it's a little more difficult to do this you have to use a different tool but we're just going to click right in between here and it will add an anchor point we're going to add four anchor points in the middle of the four line segments that are here so I'll click on these and now we have eight anchor points four in the corner and four in the inside and then what we're going to do is just grab the middle one and notice you'll get a little green line that'll help you guide it down straight and we're not going to go all the way to the center we're just going to go about three quarter like that and we're going to do it from with each new anchor point and just kind of make like a star shape almost like an Xbox logo kind of looking thing something like that and that's all we're gonna to do to start and we're just we just added and we moved anchor points again using the sub select tool by the way if you went back to the pointer you'd select the whole shape you wouldn't be able to grab those anchor points 
So I'm going back to the subselect tool. And what we're going to do now is manipulate some of these anchor points and change them. Remember, they're like connectors, and we're going to change them so they can be curve points, so there aren't just straight lines connecting these. And to do that, you have to select an anchor point, and there's different options here. Now, this is different than Illustrator, but it's actually easier. They have straight, which won't do anything. There's mirrored, which we're going to use. Disconnected, we're going to use. And even asymmetric, which we're not going to use much right now. But we're going to use mirrored first. And if you click, you can see what happens. And if you need to zoom out a little, you could do control minus or command minus. And then you can grab on these. And you see what happens if you grab on these. The handles, I'm stretching them out. I'm pulling on the end of a handle. And the more I stretch, and you could rotate the handle like I'm doing. Or if you keep it on a 45 degree angle, it'll make like a clover leaf petal. And it's kind of getting wider as I drag out these handles. And notice both sides of the handles are getting stretched. And even when you rotate it, one goes up, one goes down like a seesaw. So that's called a curve point. This is a curve point. It maintains a smooth transition between the line segments. And I'm going to do that to each of these outside points. Now they call them joints in Gravit. But I'm using mirrored. And I'll do it there and just stretch it a little bit. And I'll just repeat it here, mirrored, stretch it. And I'll go here to mirrored and stretch it. So I have like this little clover leaf here. And now I just converted these four anchor points to curve points. The inner ones are still corner points. Even though they're not straight line segments, they're still corner points. Notice there's a, a sharp change in direction. If this thing was a roller coaster and you're going on here and you came to here, you'd crash because there's a, a sudden change of direction. So curve points maintain kind of a smooth transition between line segments. Corner points, there's a sharp transition between line segments. So if I click on these, I'm going to do mirrored. And I'm not even going to extend these. I'll just leave them the way they are. And it'll make kind of like a little flower looking thing that's like on the bikini bottom on SpongeBob, something like that. So we're just doing that. That's all we're doing right now is just making this weird little thing. You could go and shorten these a little if you wanted to. Or you could extend the other ones. You could do whatever you want. You could move these. You could stretch them. But right now, we're not really moving them. We're just kind of manipulating the handles, these things. So if you wanted them a little, a little wider, you could do that. The whole idea is that you're manipulating shapes with these and manipulating nice, smooth curves. So here's our little shape that we have here. Now, if I want to change the color of this, I'm going to go back to my pointer. Now you can do it with the subselect, but I'm going to use the pointer so I know I have the whole shape selected. And I'm going to go down here to fills. Now be careful, don't click on the eyedropper because that's meant to sample colors from an image or from another shape. We're going to click right in the middle of this circle here on fills and click on it. And you can select a color from here. You could select a swatch from down here, or you could kind of mix up a color. So if you went if you wanted a green, you could go in here where the hue is and find a green and then if you wanted a darker green or something then you could click on it here's my green so you could start here and then work up here whatever you want to do you could start down here and then if you want to darken it you kind of click here and if you want to make a gradient we're gonna make a radial gradient you can go up where it says color fill and change that to be a radial gradient it's showing green in the center and black on the outside and there's the green on the center now what you could do is click on this you gotta click right on that and I'll make that yellow. So now it's yellow and black. And then if you click on the end of this, you can go here and make that green. So I could click here and make it green. And then if I want it darker, I could go down. Now, if you accidentally click on here and make something else, you can actually drag that right down to come off. So, you know, you could make a transition that had another color. So if you wanted red in there for whatever reason, you could. But I'm just going to take that off right now. And with this gradient, there's like a gradient tool here. And you could make it smaller kind of vertically and then horizontally and then if you wanted to move it you gotta grab on the blue so you get this quad arrow you can move it around a little bit but I'll just leave it in the center right now and if I wanted to put a drop shadow on this shape another little effect I don't think you have to do that on the assignment but if you wanted to go down here to drop shadow you could click on this and I think I recommend it just putting in like 10 and you could hit tab 10 10, and then turning the opacity down a little bit. What these are is they're just adjusting the offset and the blur, the bigger number that you put in for blur, the softer the shadow is going to be. 
And if you want it a little grayer, you could put 50 in here, so I'll hit enter. Sometimes you have to hit enter to make them be accepted, to make these colors be accepted. So this is my clover, and this is all you have to do right now. By the way, you don't, don't start the pro trial. If you see anything about signing up for pro, don't worry about pro right now. Now to save, you can either hit the X button here, or you could just do file save. And I'll do file save. And I'll call this Clover. If you're in CSC 103, you could put six Clover if that's the that's the name of the exercise. You could just put it down here. And you can make folders, but we're not making any folders right now. And this saves it in the cloud, meaning it's going to be saved up here on this website. And I'm going to hit save. So you always have access to it. Matter of fact, you can always go to file open from cloud because we're not working with local files right now. And that's all you need to do right now, except for sharing. So you could go over here to the share button. And if you hit share, it'll copy a URL. And if you just hit copy, it'll say copied. And then you could go back to my Warren. And if I go into coursework, if this is the course that you're in, and I'll just use this as an example, I'm going to go down to the assignment for the CSC 103. And here's vector practice with Gravit. You could click in here on the assignment and then just add a comment. Now, don't just paste your URL here. I'd like you to go here and say insert link. And then if you do that, you're going to do a control V or command V here and paste the link here. You can adjust the text that displays or you could just leave it alone. You don't have to put any title. But what I would like you to do is choose new window. And new window means when I click on the link, it'll pop up in a new window and that's what I want. So when you're done, I could hit save. Then when I look at your assignment, I'll click on the link and you see it opens it up. It opens it up in a new tab, which makes it easier to check out rather than just, you know, having to hit the back button and go back in my warrant. So, so that's all you're going to do for this first assignment. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a heart, which will be very easy. So I'll do that in the next video.